walks in boats, eh? Everybody thinks they're a sailor. So welcome to our new blog, which is about the logistics of location shooting. We've been travelling pretty much the length and breadth of New Zealand shooting locations for The Hobbit. It's been great to get outside. It's been great to get that texture of Middle Earth into the movie. After many, many weeks of shooting in the studio, we've established our characters, we've established our story, and it was finally time to get on the road and establish the landscapes of Middle Earth. So we're currently moving about 500 crew for main unit to Hamilton and then about 200 second unit crew to various parts of the country. We like to call it the biggest logistical move in cinematic history. Just because of the size of the fleet, close to 140 vehicles. As you can see, we're moving around a huge circus. I think everyone is secretly scared but quietly excited. The main reason for going on location on the project is to capture the scenic beauty of New Zealand. Peter's often said one of the things that won the fans over so much in the Lord of the Rings series was the unbelievable vistas and scenics because they were so magnificent. People are really excited about getting outside and, and taking this on the road. These are our changes from main unit crew, so this is how big we actually are. We're probably over 500. Everybody has to be in the right vehicle at the right time, they have to travel to the right place, they have to have rooms to be able to sleep in. Uh, I can't begin to imagine the logistics involved with shifting the crew, the cast, the equipment that we have on The Hobbit. It's pretty mind-blowing. You have to take everything with you to produce the films. We have to provide our own electricity, areas to cook food, areas for people to sit down and eat. You've got to provide water, the bathrooms and the toilets that people need. You have to have weather cover, heat when it's cold, and you've got to provide cooling when it's hot. The daunting aspect of that is it's all got to get into trucks, it's all got to be on wheels, and it's all got to be ready to roll. We're about to try and cram all of this, and all of that, all of this, some of that, most of this, all these trucks, most of these people, but not that scissor lift up there that stays, are going to go into some of these trucks. These guys here are going to go into these trucks too. Nice one. No cell phone laws here, man. One of our biggest challenges on the production is actually shooting all the locations in one hit for both main unit and second unit. And you can certainly start there. We're away for about seven and a half weeks if the weather holds up, so we're basically praying that every spot we go to in the country is sunny and beautiful. First location oh, is Magenta up in Old Hobbiton, so we're turning back to the first spot from Lord of the Rings, which is pretty exciting. Fantastic job, and we're out of here at four o'clock in the morning. And as you can see, we're totally under control. <laughs> Oh, I've got to carry this. We're going to some of the remotest locations of New Zealand, and if there's one thing Grips can't live without, that's the latte, soy. That's right. We're getting ready to go away, and so far we haven't packed anything. And tomorrow is our last day. The first year of the Hobbits, doing a big scene of Green Screen on the Hobbiton. This is my Louis Hobbit, my sunny Hobbit. <laughs> So we need a, the largest team on because we've also got to try and pack. And then they're going to say, where did you pack it because I will need it? Where's that wig? Did you put it away? No, we've got to put it on his head now. And we'll all be here till midnight trying to load up the buses because they leave at 4 o'clock in the morning. Be sure to pack scotch, tequila, wine and beer, a heap of plants, three razor blades, 60 kilos of toilet paper, a few artificial trees, stocks, and some Jägermeister. Last day in Wellington, so everything needs to move. We've got a stock truck coming in to take our 49 mixed age sheep, 15 chickens, 9 goats, 5 3 year old steers, 4 pheasants, 2 Muscovy ducks. We've also got Michael Jackson, the walking chicken, on the lead. We're just going to take you through, get your contracts done. We've got lunch packed for you to take on the road. So just follow me. Oh, your keys are in it. Keys are in it. We've got GPS units installed in the trucks purely so we can watch what's happening as they move up and down the country. If you don't arrive, we can't shoot. Last truck should be out of here in half an hour, and then Hobbiton. Crikey. Just remember, the reason you're on this plane is because you're so valuable to the production.
a main unit had over 100 units on wheels that were travelling to the first location. That was quite a feat in itself, just having that amount of drivers on the road. It's all about arrows, it's all about maps and directions. Once we arrive, we get in and it's about an eight hour turnaround from when the first truck turns up to when the unit base is actually functional for filming. They've got to get these trucks level for working in, got to get them all powered up, and they've got to get them all functioning so quickly. Prosthetics, makeup, costume, catering. It's not just a case of a small crew going into very out of the way places. We're literally occupying the space of a football field. I think it's actually two football fields. We've moved 7,000 cubic metres of dirt to accommodate everything that goes with making a film of this size with this many people involved. It's very much a mini city. To everyone's amazement, you know, they went home on Friday night in Wellington, turned up to work here on Monday morning and everything's here, parked up in order and looking good and working. It's okay. <laughs> Rough day at the office today, Mum. So after 110 days in the studio, we finally make it out into the sunshine. But I tell you what, Hobbiton is looking fantastic. The art department and the greens department have been working on it for nearly two years. The grasses have grown, the flowers are out, and the plastic ones have even bloomed. It's weird when you come back to a place that you literally thought you would never see again. This is a great spot. To be standing there with Elijah dressed up as Frodo, <laughs> it was the nearest thing I think I'm ever going to come to a time machine. This is actually the first time I'm stepping foot down into Hobbiton. I'll never forget that feeling of coming to Hobbiton for the first time. So much time spent in this universe, you know, with these characters, and and I keep referencing the fact that I turned 19 when I came to Hobbiton for the first time. <laughs> 11 years ago. I'm 30 now. <laughs> I don't know, there's so many feelings of nostalgia and history. We'd been searching pretty much the whole country for this rolling green countryside. We were up here scouting around and found this place called Buckland Road. And uh, sure enough, when we flew over it, we found the round tree, the hill, the lake. It was all meant to be. Of course, then it was a matter of talking to the owners of the land, getting their permission to shoot here and build here. It was a Saturday afternoon during a major New Zealand rugby game that he came and knocked on my father's door. And he said they wanted to make a movie, and my father actually said, Lord of the what? And I think I kicked him under the table quietly, but uh, that's how it all started. This time around, they built it for real. So before, all of these hobbit holes were built using polystyrene. When the filming was finished, they tore it all down. And even though it's been available for tours and, you know, for people to look at it, we didn't have any of the Hobbit holes here. Doing The Hobbit now, it gave us the ability to rebuild Hobbits out of permanent materials. Materials that aren't going to deteriorate, and we can carry on showing people what's involved in making a movie behind the scenes. It's all, I mean, that's actual rock, stone. It's pretty amazing. Hobbiton is going to stay exactly as it is today, which is fantastic. So there's real wood, there's real stone, real bricks, and it's going to be here hopefully for decades to come. Yeah. No, it's a, so it's, it's, um, it's a great gift to the people of uh, so Manama and uh, as Minister yeah. of Tourism. Oh, <laughs> so, well done. Some prime real estate. I'll get you two. I'll get Kate and Hello. 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 Are you guys having a good day? Yeah, good. Hey. How are those feet treating you? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Are they? When you're at Hobbiton, you forget that you're on a film set. Seeing it like this kind of living model village is just extraordinary. And you just totally believe this place exists. And that's because it does. Maybe I've smoked a little bit too much of this um, now. It's an authentic village. It's 100%, 360 degree, look wherever you like, little Hobbit village. You can imagine just being a hobbit in this environment and get up and have a cup of tea on the doorstep and listen to the birds and the frogs and the children running around. Or go to the market, buy a big bottle of beer and drink it. And <laughs> loving it. You're not really designing a film set, you're trying to put yourself in the mindset of a hobbit and figuring out, well, where would you like your house to be? There are 44 personalised hobbit holes and each hobbit hole has the different little details depending on their location. It's kind of amazing, the door's actually open. 
Hello? Hello? No. Nobody home at the moment. They must be at the market. <laughs> Welcome to the set of the Hobbit. <laughs> so how did you get involved in this? My four daughters auditioned and they all missed out. <laughs> and I got in. So I wasn't a popular father at that point. <laughs> You guys are up for stealing, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Good. Yeah, big bad hobbits. Check this out. Oh, yeah. I'd like to get a nice comb over. Is this going to be in the movie? Yeah, we can cut that. That's fantastic. We've got that. <laughs> so we've just finished our first week on location. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I just wish I could move into one of these hobbit holes. I mean, this would be an absolutely idyllic place to live. It really would. This is the sort of place that I would very happily retire to. In fact, uh, might think about it tonight or the next day. We could retiring here. That would be quite nice. I hope you enjoyed the first part of our location blog. The second part will be ready very early in the new year. And in the meantime, we've just shot the last shot for The Hobbit in 2011. So it only remains to do one last thing, which is to wish you all a Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Woo! <laughs> Champagne! Very good.